Now we are starting day one. We will follow the beginnings of generative art after the end of World War II in chronological order. Uh, starting point is the Hall of Fame, and so we are starting with uh, generative photographers. Now I want to be a, a role model for presenters here. I'm stopping at that point, saving maybe a few minutes uh, for much more important uh, people and presenters of today, like Stefan Kronert. He, is, he holds a doctorate in art history and um, is working at the Sprengel Museum, where he's deputy director. He is um, focused on uh, history of art, of uh, photography, uh, also uh, theory of, of photography, and he has very special know-how in the field of generative photographers. Uh, Stefan, where are you? Okay, would you, would you please come on stage? Um, I will put the clock again to 20 minutes, so... <laughs> Thanks a lot, and uh, here's Stefan. I'm very glad that you are here, and uh, welcome. I, I really hope that everything is working with the presentations. We had a few complications yesterday. Um, I'm really stressed, but I hope it will work. <laughs> Stefan, the mic is yours. Yeah, good morning. Uh, first of all, I have to thank you, uh, Susanne and Doro, for the invitation. And as you, as you may have noticed, I'm an old school art historian because I, my lecture is based on, uh, on paper. So, as an art form, photography does not have a linear historical evolution, especially not in Germany. Here, it made its first appearance in the 20s and early 30s of the 20th century. Alongside new vision and the new ob objectivity, this included avant-garde tendencies that developed their own specific photographic form of abstraction. Here you see the example of Man Ray. The Second World War also meant a deep break in the recognition of photography as art. The medium did not recover from this in Germany until the 1970s. However, there is a prehistory to this rediscovery, a kind of in-between period, which I would like to outline in my following short lecture. It concentrates on the aforementioned approaches to abstraction. It was the group Photoform and also Otto Steinert in Saarbrücken who created an important breeding ground for this with his exhib exhibitions and so-called subjective photography. Steinert's 1950 One Food Walker, you see it here, is certainly one of the most prominent examples, which has also made it into the canon of historical narratives of photography. Otherwise, if you only look at the volume of Meisterwerke der Fotografie, masterpieces of photography edited by Bernd Stiegler and Felix Tullemann, it is dominated by a documentary form of photography. From an international perspective, photography in Germany in the immediate post-war period was not very important, not at least because it was not yet being received as art again. Nevertheless, photography was taken in a sophisticated and innovative way. I would like to highlight first Peter Kietmann in this context. Due to war injury that resulted in a leg amputation, Kedman was unable uh, until, uh, to work until 47, and in the years that followed, he attended the masterclass at the Bayerische Staatslehranstalt and completed the masterclass with Adolf Lazzi. Together with Toni Schneiders, Otto Steinert, Ludwig Windstoßer, and Wolfgang Reisewitz, Ketman founded the Photoform Group in 1949, 
which exhibited at the first Fotokina in Cologne just one year later. In an effort to distance themselves from the appropriation of the medium by fascism, the young photographers searched for an unencumbered visual language in the post-war years and drew on the avant-garde approaches of the 1920s. The best example of this is his pendulum swings from 50 to 52, with which he pushed the door into a technolo technological age. Incidentally, there are currently very similar phenomena in the work of Thomas Roof, who has been creating uncontrollable pendulum uh, images in his new untitled series, which has been developed since 22 in explicit reference to Ketman and Co. In this context, Heinrich Heidersberger should also be mentioned. In 1955, he constructed the expansive apparatus of a rhythmograph with which he techni uh, technically integrated chance into the creation of images. Once set in motion, this uh, photographic drawing machine, you see it here, generates highly complex images of traces of light via long exposure. The dynamic oscillations fixed on them created virtual two-dimensional objects with a, a three-dimensional effect. What is particularly interesting here, and in my view, this distinguishes him from Kidman, is the revelation of uh, uh, the space consuming apparatus of creation, which I would like to count as part of the work alongside the image. We have to discuss it with Benjamin Heidersberger, uh, maybe. Once set in motion, and you see here an example, this photographic drawing machine creates a complex picturality via long exposure, as I mentioned. He built what he called a rhythmograph from a standard scaffolding, a, sc a construction with four pendulums, a mirror, and a point light source, which mechanically integrated chance into the image of traces of light. You will see it in Wolfsburg in two days, I think. So we now jump to the 1960s. The significance of the photographer Gottfried Jäger, born in 32, uh, 37, now becomes central. Gottfried Jäger's work began with his appointment as a lecturer at the Werkkunstschule Bielefeld in 1960. Even at that time, he was already pursuing the path of abstract photography, which he radicalized a few years later into a concrete visual language and then reflected on, on uh, theoretically from 65 onwards. Although the term artistic self-conception was not used at first, the trained photo engineer nevertheless described it by emphasizing a creative will, the pursuit of photographic image criticism, and the goal of absolute photography. Under the influence of Max Benze and Herbert Franke, a Jäger formulated a radicalized form of the image, which he first described as generative photography in 68, on the occasion of a joint exhibition with Kilian Breyer, Pierre Cordier, and Hein Gravenhorst at the Kunsthaus Bielefeld, the forerunner of uh, Kunsthalle Bielefeld. Here is uh, the invitation card of this. Artistically, this theoretical ref uh, reflection was preceded by the creation of the pinhole structures in January 67. The pinhole structures are based on the principle of the camera obscura and are based on the punctiform appearance of light on sensitive <laughs> photographic paper. In a nutshell, Jäger produced a pinhole aperture containing several, more precisely, 50 pixels and placed further, partly shifted pinhole apertures on top of them, resulting in a pattern that 
could be varied, varied. Quote of Jäger, the differences between individual images result from a fixed program that allows the selected steps to be repeated. From the abundance of possible manipulations, those sequences of steps are preferred in which the next stops, a step follows a previous step with logical necessity, discursive uh, method uh, as opposed to intuitive or empirical. Quote end. A total of 254 different works were created in this manner between 67 and 74. Uh, 74, yeah, right. In terms of reception, one can say that the pinhole structures enable the dynamic per, uh, perceptual experience. That means one can see seeing. To put it more precisely, the images open up the possibility of perceptual awareness. This realization is heightened when several pictures are seen side by side, as you've seen it here. This is exactly what Jaeger is aiming for as he has conceived the pinhole structures as a series. For it is precisely through the variability evident in the comparison that the mediality as such becomes conscious, photography can therefore be experienced as photography. Parallel to the Western German spirit of optimism, an aesthetic developed with the new political utopias that wanted to renounce uh, sub its subjectivism. Here it was initially the scientist and writer Herbert Franke and the philosopher Max Benze, who, as Jäger always emphasized, served as an inspiration. This form of generative aesthetics, you see here the example of Benze, which is based on information theory, relativizes or even pro programmatically rejects individual elements of art production. Jäger himself considers the inspiration of Herbert Franke, whose writings, whose writings he became acquainted with as early as 59, that means during his studies, to be more important than the ones of Benze. Together with Franke, he later published several books and conversely, Franke took a number of photographs, as you see it here. However, it was just two days ago that Jäger told me uh, directly, I quote from his email, Franke's life and work are directly linked to the development of our discipline. This is especially true with regard to his fundamental f uh, from the analog image to the digital image of our time. Franke's book, Art and Constructions, a Physics and Metaphysics as a Photographic Experience, laid the theoretical and pictorial foundation for this seven decades ago. A vision the idea and pra practice of generative photography drew on it photography as they first represent uh, as first represented in bielefeld in 68 they were sketches of the latent potential of our discipline and of the technical images of our times herbert franke also wrote the fundamental text on this subject quotes and from jäger not at least because Franke, who worked in an extremely diverse manner, turned to other themes after a certain time. The exchange between him and Jäger concentrated on the period of the 60s and 70s. The works of generative photography from the end of the 1960s onwards, with their systematic constructive visual investigations, formed a certain methodological conclusion. This is, uh, quote, an ante anticipation of the structural moments of the digital age, as, quote, end, 
as Stefan Spohr called it in his dissertation, Die Fotografie im Zeitalter der Digitalisierung, in English, Photography in the Age of Dig Digitalization, published in 2022. From a historical perspective, they represent a link between experimental photography and the cross-media ideas and practices of the subsequent conceptual art of the 1970s. So we have now arrived in the 70s. The rediscovery of photography as art is taking its course. Surprisingly, however, the abstract tendencies fade into the background. The, the reason for that is to be a topic of research. The so-called documentary style dominates now the reception. And it will take a few more years bef before this changes. Only in the digital age is abstraction celebrating a rediscovery and opening up a new interest in history, especially in art history. There, and I think there is still a lot to do, and I, I hope that this uh, symposium will start with it. Thank you. <laughs>